Let's jump to this one from Vanity Fair. Ladies and gentlemen, Donald Trump's next stop on his podcast blitz may be Joe Rogan. Ooh. Did you guys see this? I'd be, I yeah. didn't hear. I Trump, heard Trump said he's going on Rogan. I sick. dig he it, man. It. And Rogan said, what? <laughs> what did Joe <laughs> say? Yeah, they were. I saw. Uh, I'll play. The, I'll play the clip for you. Actually, you're doing a lot of podcasts recently. One that I would love to see you on is I think Joe Rogan has to have you on. Yeah. Yeah. Would Would you do that? Oh, sure, I would. I think Joe, like besides I, us, Joe. I mean, I think the, I'm doing it. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, you are going to do Joe Rogan? Yeah, I am. Joe Rogan's the best in the game for sure, and I think. Yeah. You know, did Joe having, become so well known because of the UFC? And he, he does a great job with that, right? What I mean, was it that made Joe the best during COVID? You know, he was very outspoken on all the corruption yeah. going on during COVID. And I think that's personally when I started watching him a lot, too. Oh, just yeah. he's an honest guy, too, right? He is. So I think. Good guy. Good guy. And I think you guys together would just And he's be, got a good voice. That's important. Yeah. yeah. So they didn't actually have the clip in there where he says, I'm going on Joe Rogan. No, he said it. Oh, he did? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. It's kind of I'm weird missing. because he says, like, oh, yeah, I'd be going on. Actually, I think I'm going on. Like, right, right, it right. goes from being like. I am happy to do it slash now I think maybe one of my assistants told me it's happening. The reason I get got so much respect for Joe, like we became friends after I did his podcast, is that he risked his entire platform to give a voice to the other side that was being silenced. So I sent him a, a clip originally of Peter McCullough, right? And uh, he ended up getting Peter on the podcast, Dr. Peter McCullough. So yeah. I wrote a book. And this Dr. Joel Kahn, who's a good friend of mine, uh, he wrote the forward and he said, hey, check out this doctor. I trained him to be a cardiologist. And it was Peter McCullough speaking in front of the Texas Senate, right? And how they shut him down and all this stuff. And I sent that video to Joe. And Joe was like, yo, this is crazy what they're doing. And that's when all the real attacks started against Joe. Mm -hmm. Once he spoke up and gave a side, they tried to silence, you know, didacticism in the media is just unbelievable mm -hmm. at the at this point in the game. They they shut down any other narrative other than the one they're trying to push and they just try to destroy people. So when Joe gave the platform to Peter McCullough and started really and had um, Alex uh, from The New York Times, he got fired. What was his name? Uh, not sure. I don't remember. I can't remember. But he started Alex. giving a voice to, uh, yeah, Alex. Uh, he, Berenson? Yeah, Alex Berenson, who's like a numbers guy. He had all the data. And then he had um, Rob, Dr. Robert Malone on and all these other people. And I, I believe like, hey, you know, science, trust the science that we kept getting told means you hear from both sides. Science means you debate the science and you let science take place. That's mm -hmm. not what happened. There was one narrative, and that's why I really gained so much respect for Joe during that whole thing because they tried to take him off uh, Spotify right. and lose his platform and everything. Yeah. And you know, I mean, these... he kind of was in a league of his own yeah. before COVID. I mean, I only knew him from UFC stuff, but he had really built a serious yeah. business and carved out. Um, I think a, a form of podcasting Absolutely. that he has sort of become Absolutely. signature for. So it is interesting that, you know, he was like, I have questions. I want to hear answers. I mean, that's that's what's so unique to me about his show is like he just gets to be like, I'm kind of curious about what you have to talk about. Right. I want to hear about it. And one of the things that I said was he's more punk rock than any of these people because he risked whatever he got well, over a hundred million dollar platform on Spotify. These bands kept quiet. They put out records for years calling out the government, calling out the establishment, call, you know, and then every one of them kept quiet. I, I, let me tell you, bro, I, I'd be willing to bet you take any one of those punk bands at, in, in their heyday when they're like, screw the government. If I walked up to them and said, hey, 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 I'll give you a million dollars. We're going to sign you to a deal, but we don't want the anti-government stuff. Just, you know, tone it down. They'd say yes. Look They'd at say Jello, sure. Look at Jello Biafra. Got to call him out. This guy was completely anti-establishment, anti-government. And if you look at his stance during the whole COVID thing, I was like, we're living in an alternative reality. And all these bands that I looked up to, you know, my new album, I said, all my heroes abandoned me. Right. I had a lyric in there because all the punks that I looked up to back in the day just all started bootlicking the government, man. And That's I'm like, wild, yo, dude. dude. 
and then, I, it, I, and then came after anybody that had anything to do. People would, well, let's, you know. There, there was a, I can't remember who said this. Was it Matt Walsh, maybe? I can't remember. No, it might have been Alex Berenson. I don't know. I'm not giving proper credit. But they were saying on X, maybe it was Zuby. I think it was Zuby. I love Zuby. Yeah, that, that often people think that when you got a lot of money, you got FU money. I think it was Zuby. You got FU money and you're like, I'm rich. I can do whatever I want. That's actually not true. Yeah. These people are super rich and they're like, I'm not going to I'm not gonna risk speaking up for $10 million. Are you nuts? When people are broke, they're like, who cares? I'm broke. But then you look at Joe Rogan and he's got all these big deals and he has apologized on some instances. Yeah. And he's like, uh, he, he he went ham. He said, I'm, I'm going after all of this stuff. I'm going to talk about whatever I want to talk about. I'm going to call out the, the BS. He championed things. CNN ran a picture of his face, making it look like he was sick. Yo, you saw that? Oh, that was he, disgusting. They, they made him look green. They ma- he, he, they, he and, and he never gray. backed down. And he they never backed down. They said he took court. Well, we can't get into all that. Whatever. Well, they, they, they put a... Dude, I, I got to tell you. They were claiming... That he was taking horse medicine, and they showed a little cartoon, like there's a little horse icon on the screen. Yeah. I was like, why did they do that? Well, he had S- Sanjay Gupta on, and yeah. he called out Sanjay Gupta, and Sanjay Gupta had to cop to it, like, yeah, that was wrong. They shouldn't have done that. And then he backtracked that later. That just shows you, Gu- like, Gu- what Gupta went on C- Gu- Gupta went on CNN did later, he? and I then backtracked. I didn't see that. Yep. He, he was on Rogue, and he was like, yeah, yeah, you're right. But then later said, well, you know, actually, because these people in the press, the corporate press machine, like we saw with Martha Raddatz when she tells J.D. Vance, it's only a handful of apartments being taken over. Yeah. They hate you. <laughs> they, they Look, man, I feel like when you look at Bill Gates and these, and these powerful global elites, and then you look at people like Joe Rogan, it's populist, it's elitist. The elitists, in their mind, they're thinking, the average person is too stupid. We need to just manipulate them like sheep. And then the populists are like, hey, man, you do you and we'll figure it out. So we're on the populist side. We believe in you, dear listener, to make your own deci- decisions and, and do what's best for you. And that if we if we work together, th- then meritocracy and the best ideas win. These elites, they think, nah, like, like Michael Bloomberg said, we're going to tax the poor. I'm not. That's a quote. Yeah. He said we tax the poor because poor people spend money on things that, that, that are bad for them. So he tries doing the soda tax. He tries to do these punitive taxes because he doesn't want poor people to be able to buy these things. Yeah, I was in New York when he was when he was doing all that. I mean, if you just listen to the stuff that the World Economic Forum talks about, like, you know, it's just incredible what they're planning for for everybody else. And then, you know, you it's it's like rules for thee and not for me. When you when you go the 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 meeting they had over there in Switzerland, they're flying in all the elites on eleven hundred. Private jets, SUVs, parties, eating whatever they want, do whatever they want. But they want you to stay home and eat bugs. And, you know, you'll own nothing and be happy. Well, I mean, Klaus guys- Schwab is like, I can't even... How are people siding with this person and being like, yeah. Because they, they, they think they'll be part of the club. Yeah. These, these, these liberal elites who hear these things and then side with it think that when all is said and done... And they're forcing people in pods and eating the bugs. They're like, yeah, but I'll, I'll get steak. Yeah. Because you take a look at the, the like, what is it, cop, what are they doing, COP24, now COP25 or whatever, the climate agenda stuff, yep. where all the billionaires flying on private jets to complain about how everybody else is flying on commercial planes. These right. liberals are like, if I side with them and help them, then I get to suckle the teat of the machine when everyone else is living in the gutter. It's not going to happen. When the elites shut everything down, shut down your cars, shut down your computers, Make you, oh, you get rid of cash and you're all digital currency now. Right. These these liberals are going to be right there on the bottom with everybody else. Well, you know that that famous saying: first they came for this, and then they came for these people, and then finally yeah. I didn't speak up, and then finally they they came they came for me. You know, and that's we're seeing it all. We're seeing like crazy stuff, and I never. Really was in. I never. I just wanted to be left alone. I lived in New York. I was a musician. I trained for Iron Man. I I helped feed the poor. I did whatever. But it's like, it's like you kind of dragged me into this to have to stand up for my rights and be yeah. like one side. I never. I mean, I, and I'm gonna say it. Never had anything like what we just experienced from 2020 on ever happen prior. So I just went about doing my thing but in 2020 it was like yo like you dragged me into 
the ring, you know what I'm saying? You think a lot of Americans feel that way? I think Absolutely. I think 2020 Absolutely. and and the especially like fallout in 2021 changed a lot of Americans perspective. Absolutely. And I'm gonna t- I just read somebody said, "Man, you better start speaking up." Too many people got on their knees during COVID and obeyed and did all this stuff and they're bullies and that's what they do. And I know from the streets of New York like I said, I was locked up in everything in the worst places, Spofford. I went upstate. Like, I could tell you right now, if you don't stand up to a bully, they're just going to keep doing what they're doing. And that's everybody obeyed and complied. Two weeks flat in the curve and all this. And I'm like, I smelled the rat right away. I said, nah, I, I, I filmed I, and I put it on my Instagram page. I went around to all the hospitals because my friends are nurses and they're like, dude, we're not overrun. We're not. And I filmed about six or seven hospitals, no ambulances, no nothing, empty emergency rooms, the triage tent in Central Park. Nobody went in there. Uh, The the Javits, they had thousand beds, (laughs) six beds full. The well, USS but uh, that's because Cuomo put the sick people in nursing homes and killed a bunch of elderly people. No, they, well, that was the old people he did that to. Right. He put the old— uh, He put he put recovering he fought, COVID patients, instead of using Javits, he put them in nursing homes, and it killed 15,000 people. Right. Well, he uh, was just crazy, and he put out a but book— it, But it wasn't just him. Yeah. It was—I uh, I believe it was, what, Wolf, Whitmer, Newsom? Uh, who am I missing? Because there was, a, there was a, yeah, they were doing it in Pennsylvania. They Jersey, did it, Michigan, Ohio. But he, the audacity of that guy to put out a book about what he did during COVID in the middle of COVID. He put he, his right. book came out in the middle of COVID, bragging about how. And, and meanwhile, he killed how many thousands Vast of elderly 15, people? Fifteen thousand people. And I wonder what the impact on the election was. Thanks for checking out this clip from TimCast IRL. Make sure to watch the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Subscribe to this channel and we will see you all there.